All right, so here I've laid out absolutely everything you'll need to make your brass breech. So on the supply side of things, you're going to need two one foot long, nine sixteenths inch brass tubes and one 17 30 seconds inch brass tube. Then you're going to need a caliber and shock pad, which you can buy from Captain Slug or get through my kits, one of the larger caliber and O-rings, one of the caliber and steel pins, and then the replacement muzzle piece and replacement ram piece. These are both on Thingverse, the link is in the description. Um, they've just been resized slightly to fit the brass better. And so you're going to have to either print those out yourself or get someone else to print them for you. Then on the tool side of things, we have a Sharpie, ideally fine tip, you need something that can mark brass, so for me at least a sharpie is what works. You're going to need a round file to file out the inside of the parts. Ideally it's a wood grain, it'll make it a lot faster. Um, you shouldn't need to do too much, but having a good file really helps. Then you're going to need safety goggles because you're going to be working with a Dremel and it throws really fine brass dust that you don't want in your eyes. Uh, we've got a hot glue gun for securing the pin. Some extra Dremel cutting discs steel wool, and a Dremel with a cutoff disc attached. All right, so first let's take a look at what we're building. A caliber and brass breech consists of three main pieces. We've got the front muzzle piece and 9 16 inch telescope and barrel section. Then we have the 17 30 seconds inch section, which fits inside. And so those set your barrel length effectively. And then back inside your magwell, this piece is exposed. This is the feed ramp for the darts, essentially. And then when your breech is in the rear position, this is what it looks like. So this will slide forwards naturally, enclose your dart, get you a fully sealed breech, and then you've got this nice, long, effective barrel that's going to get you some crazy FPS numbers. All right, so that's the basic premise. And then obviously this is the back ram piece. So we've got our replacement ram right there and our breech. Um, one thing that you'll note is that that steel pin I showed you has been driven through the back, that's for vacuum loading. And so that, that gives you a general idea of what you're building and what it should look like when you're done. Um, obviously pick your own colors and that sort of thing. This is obviously the orange front muzzle piece and the white ram base. All right, so first things first, unpack your brass. All right, so what you'll notice off the bat is that your 17 30 seconds will slide very smoothly inside of your 9 16 Your goal is to maintain this because the better this is, the smoother your brass breech will operate. So if you've got nice round pieces like I do here, they should slide fine. If they've been crushed in shipping, they won't slide as well, and that's going to be a major problem. But these ones are clearly quite good. All right, so now that we've got all of our brass, we're going to start fitting the 3D printed pieces for the brass. So you'll notice that if we take one of our 9 16 inch pieces, it won't fit. It's relatively close, and you can definitely get to stick, but it's not fitting properly. So we're gonna have to file this out because we want a really tight friction fit. So grab your round file that you've set aside and start filing. Obviously you want to keep this hole as circular as possible, it shouldn't take too much filing, just make sure that it fits properly. So now I'm going to try a test fit. And so we'll see it's sliding in, it's not quite there. I think it might be good enough. So now what I'm going to do is it's about halfway through, I'm going to start pounding it on the table. And so this ensures that, you know, even though the fit's not perfect, the brass will cut away a little bit of the wall and we'll get a really nice, tight, airtight fit. And that also means that the brass will never slip out of the ram base during priming. So, just time to just tap away. Alright, so you'll see the brass is now completely flush, or at least mostly. Alright, the brass is completely flush with the bottom of the printed piece. And so that, that's perfect, that's exactly what we want. All right, so now we can set this piece aside temporarily. And we're gonna follow that up with the same thing for our muscle piece. So just file and then fit the 9 16 piece through. All right, give it a test fit. 
so that's too tight. This piece can be a little looser because we can secure it in place with an adhesive later. All right, give that a shot. And so with a twist and a push, I can now push it through. And we've got brass coming out that side. So that's perfect. Just like that. So this piece is now pretty much done. You can set it aside till the end when you're going to buff it up with some steel wool. All right, now it's time to draw some lines. We need to mark our cuts for the brass. So a couple things to note. Um, it's going to be seven inches from the back of the ram base to your first cut. So that span from there to there is seven inches. So I'm going to use my mat here and line it up, count it out, and just draw a little line. So something to note is that the ram base is vertical with this face up. And so that's where I'm just going to start my line right there. So that's going to be my basic cut. Then I'm going to go two and a half inches forwards and I'm going to draw another line. And so this line is where the front of the brass is getting cut off. And I will continue this line all the way around. So I'm just going to draw and spin the brass. All right, so there's now a line around the brass where we know we can cut. And then flip this side so that this mark that you originally made is on the bottom. And we're going to draw two lines. You want something wide enough that the magazine can pass around it freely but you want to maximize it as much as possible so that your breach is as strong as possible. So we have our two basic lines right there. And I'm just going to continue those back all the way. All right, so you'll see we're starting to sketch something that's looking like a breach. If you mess up at all, obviously just fix it up, make new marks. None of this really matters that much. What really matters is where you cut. You want it to be symmetrical and even. Just like that. And then something to note is that the back here should have a slope to it so that the pieces fit into each other better. So if you look at these two pieces, it's not a 90 degree angle. There's a nice slope there. And there's a slope on this one as well. And so that means that they guide the two pieces together when the breech closes just like that, so it gets you a smoother operating breach. So I have my lines that I'm going to stick with on this one, and then I'm going to go over to my 17 30 seconds piece, and I'm going to mark it almost exactly the same. But since I have one already made, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace the lines that I have, just like that, and that will make it significantly easier for me. So I have a good idea of where they should be. And this one doesn't matter rotationally. Once again, we got a sloping angle, but what you're really doing is just get those two cuts right. So I have a general idea of where I am cutting. So now it's down to the Dremel tool.
Okay, so I'm back with the parts that I just finished dremeling. Now you'll notice there's lots of rough edges on the parts right now. So what you're gonna wanna do is grab that steel wool and start buffing those, par those bits out. Shouldn't be too hard to get the scraps off. And then we can get the brass shining too. Real nice. All right, so we've got our two polished up pieces. And now we're going to add the Calburn shock pad to the back. So just peel away the sticker and then do your best to get it centered. Just like that. And you can see the vacuum protection that we have there. Then O-ring over and we are pretty much ready to install. Just make sure that these two pieces are sliding nice and freely. So right there, I've got a little bit of binding, so I want to clean up those edges a little bit before I throw it in the caliburn. But if you just work it in a little bit, it won't be bad at all. See, that one's already starting to slide nice and smooth. Okay. Then we grab our muscle piece, slide that over the front, and that is a completed breach right there. All right, now in terms of installation into your caliburn, this is obviously going to replace your RAM. What you're going to do to set barrel length is you're going to put this piece in with about three to four inches out the back. And then you are going to slide the 17 30 seconds in and you are going to set it wherever this lip meets the front edge of your magwell. So you want this flush with the front edge of the magwell so that darts feed in smoothly. And then you're going to set it in place with either epoxy, some kind of glue, or just electrical tape will work fine. It's not a super high stress part. You just need to make sure that it can't slide at all. Then you're going to take this piece and put it in, replace the RAM, and you should be done. Um, just make sure that there's always overlap in between these two pieces, and then make sure that everything's aligned properly before you use it. Never force it. You're gonna damage your brass if you force it. Fix your alignment issues first. It should slide in nice and smooth. So there's a completed breach. Um, thanks for watching. Um, while I was gone, while I wasn't really paying attention to my channel, it hit almost 200 subscribers, which is crazy for me to think about. Like, I, I mean, I look back at my old videos and I kind of feel like they're crap, but, you know, whatever. Um, this is the sort of thing that I really like to make because I feel like it helps people become better nerfers, become better modders. Um, it saves them money, saves them time. You know, if you have something and it breaks, maybe this video helps you fix it. Maybe this video, you know, explains something you didn't understand about the brass breaches before. Uh, thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.